Hello everyone, this is Andy B from Student CRM and I'm joined by Dom. Hello. In this session, we'll be looking at knowledge base. Now on the screen, you can see the Student CRM dashboard. We are in New Forest University, which is one of our demo universities and knowledge base is down here. So Andy, what is the knowledge base app used for? Yeah, knowledge base is used for sharing information. Um, that could be PDFs, videos, maps, uh, frequently asked questions. It's used for sharing information. OK, and who uses this app? Well, it could be anyone who uses the CRM, uh, depending on who they want to share information with. So your inquiries team might want to share information with students who are asking questions about the campus or courses, that sort of thing. Um, it could be used for sharing information with contacts or agents, but also it can be used for sharing information internal to the university, um, such as help articles, how to use a CRM or best practice articles, or even training videos, that sort of thing. So it's quite a flexible app uh, for sharing information. Okay, thank you. Right, now, the way I want to demonstrate it is by answering an inquiry. So over here on the right, we have the inquiries app. And if I enter inquiries, there we go. We've got a list of inquiries that are coming. And one came in today from Archie Leach. And if we go and see what Archie was asking about, uh, Archie Leach, and his question is, please, can you send me a map of the campus? Many thanks. Now, you might have a map as a PDF uh, on, your, on your PC, and you might send him that, or you might send him a link to somewhere on your website. But actually, I have a map saved in Knowledge Base. Uh, so, dear, hi Archie, here is a map. And then I click on this button here. And we have so many articles, but I need a campus map. So if I put that in there, campus, that should filter down to this one here, campus map. I click on that, I use in my reply, and boom. So can any officer use that in any reply then to an inquiry? Yes, they can. Yes, yes. And so you can preload uh, lots of um, answers to common questions that students have in knowledge base. And then when you read an inquiry that comes in asking, for example, like, can I have a campus map? You say, yeah, we've got one of those easily. You can click on that. Um, there's the map. And then you click send. And Archie's got a map of your campus. Thank you. So that's using an article from a knowledge base as a saved reply in an inquiry in this case. That's useful. Thank you. That's right. So it saves you having to run around trying to find those resources. Or if it's something a little bit more technical, financial or something like that, you could have all those answers stored um, as, as saved replies. And then you can send them to anybody who has an inquiry. OK, now if I go back to the dashboard, you can see that we have uh, knowledge base down here, but also we have it on the menu at the top of the CRM here. And if you click on that, I can see that we have three occurrences of knowledge base. One's called articles for user training private. Next one is FAQs for website visitors public. And the other one is articles for inquiries officers private. Now the campus map that I just found and sent to Archie Leach was in the third one articles for inquiries officers and you could have as many articles as you like you could have hundreds if you like and they can include uh, images they can include text and they can include videos the next the top one there articles for user training that's obviously a private one because that is uh, users at your establishment teaching each other how to use the crm and this is quite important if people change their job role. So they may be very competent and confident in using the CRM. Uh, but when they move to another role within the organization, and maybe there's a bit of the CRM that they don't know how to use, it would be helpful if there were uh, best practice articles or training videos that they could watch to get a better understanding of the new apps that they are being introduced to. The middle one there is FAQs for website visitors. So that is public. That link can be shared um, to anyone outside the university who wants more information about courses or accommodation or the campus life. So that is a public one. So How's that, Dom? Yeah, that, that's good. So they're used internally and they can be used externally. 
Um, and I guess that like an officer searched for a campus map, um, I presume therefore that a student can search for a word and get back answers on a public yeah, certainly. Um, knowledge so, base. So if I go to this bottom one here, articles for inquiries officers. Ah, oh, that's easy. The campus map is right there. But I could search for it, campus, and there it is. It's highlighted it for me. Um, take off that search. Uh, we've got three articles in there. Uh, what is the cost of the course? And what is the cost of a UG course? So yes, this is uh, this is the view end of knowledge base. Uh, this is where um, users, or if it is a public one, this is where they can view it. And so, as I say, yeah. So on that public view, an officer doesn't make any changes, no edits. It's purely the view, the search and find and read then. That's yes? right. Yes, that's right. Yeah, this is the view part of it. Yeah, you don't edit them from here. Okay. If you want to edit them or you want to create uh, new articles, then you go into the app. There it is, Knowledge Base. Click on there. And at the top here, we have our three occurrences. Now, you're probably wondering, why do you need three occurrences? And it's so that we can separate out, separate out articles so that that way we can determine who has access to them, who can view them, because there might be certain articles that we don't want the students to see or we don't want our agents to see. So that's one reason why we have them in different occurrences so that we can then decide who has access to them. So I don't put all of my articles for public, for agents, for inquiries office. I don't put them onto one giant knowledge base then. Not really, no, you you want to separate them out logically, yeah. Um, and also different users in your establishment will have access to different occurrences. So um, if someone has no interest in agents, well, of course they won't have any access to the agent's occurrence. Okay, thank you. Okay. So uh, let me see, what have we got here? Yeah, at the top here, we have checklist training video. So this is a training video. Uh, that would be viewable and useful to your users in your establishment. So it's something very internal. It's private just inside the university. And if I click on here, I can show you how that article was made. So it starts with a title, checklist training video, and then it has some text. This is a training video all about checklists. Click the play button, start watching. There's also a link to a slide deck. And the next bit down is an iframe where the video sits. Now, if you click on the source button here, that will show you the HTML code for this article. And in here is the source code for the video, which is uh, stored on Vimeo. Now, probably most users won't need to go this deep. You just need to know that you can type in any words you like here and then you can just get someone to put the code in for the video if it is a video or the image if it is an image. We've got a little image icon here. Uh, we've got the usual ways of formatting, making things bold, different colors, italic and so on. So it's quite uh, flexible in how you can set up your help center articles. I think for the Vimeo and YouTube, I remember that when looking at a video on YouTube, I think you can get an embed code there. So if I've got a video on YouTube, presumably I just pick up that share embed code from there and, and paste put it, it in here. In. Yes. Yeah. That's so right. I don't need IT to do that. I can do that myself if I've got YouTube or Vimeo, I presume. Yes, it's, it's not that difficult. And once you've done it once, then you can uh, copy and paste it into your next video and then just change the actual link itself. So yeah, it's not too difficult. Once you've set it out once, it, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, further down the page here, we've got category. So this was a training video, so it's in the training video category. However, there are some other categories, accommodation, finance, general, and so on. Keywords, they're very important because we, we need a, a keyword there so that we can check for um, or we can search for the video that we're after. So it's always good to have a, a keyword in there. Waiting means, um, well, how important is this video? And that's on a scale of one to 10. So I put my training videos at scale five. 
who can watch the video? Well, all the users, because we want as many people as possible to watch this training video. So we set that to all users. Um, and review date. Now, that's in the past, but a review day is helpful because some of your articles, they might, um, they might need reviewing in six months time. And so what you can do is you can put a review day on there to help you remember that, ah, I need to check that video or I need to check that article again, just to make sure that it's up to date and if necessary, make any amendments. So items like if I had a campus map as an article, it might well be that every year the campus map gets upgraded as things change around the campus. So if I had a review date there, then I'd know to do that. So how can I see um, when an article is coming up to be reviewed? Yeah, certainly. Right. So if we go back to the dashboard, uh, so this is a list of all our articles. There's 97 of them so far. Mm -hmm. And here we've got a drop down review dates. So uh, how many articles will need reviewing in the next day? Ooh, what that's oh, showing see. is that those have gone past the review date. So they should have been reviewed date and reviewed and those uh, dates modified uh, maybe in the next month, six months. Aha, there we are. There's my checks video, which needs uh, reviewing on the 1st of September, six months time. And finally, anything that needs reviewing within the next year. Uh, thank you. And there's the campus map. Yeah, there's the campus map one, which we'll need reviewing in a year's time. Yeah. OK. Right. Going back to my checklist video, let's see what other settings we have here. Uh, over here, uh, usually you set your um, article in draft. And then when you're happy with it, you set it to live. It can't be viewed until it's in live. It can't be viewed publicly until it's in live. Um, and finally, down here, uh, this is where you can attach a PDF. So not only is this a video, but at the bottom of the video, uh, there's a link to um, a PDF of the slide deck that was used on that particular video. OK, on the categories, Andy, hmm. there's a drop down there. So how do I change the names of those categories or put a new category in or how do I do that? Hmm. Well, that is a setting for super users. So here we are back on our list of articles. And in the top right here, we have the settings cog. So if you go in the settings cog, and there we are, the very first tab talks about categories. So if you click the plus button, you can add whatever category you like. Or if you want to change the wording of any of these, you can click the edit pencil and change that. Or indeed, you can delete them by clicking on the dustbin. Thank you. OK, yeah, that makes sense. OK, now the next tab along, and again, this is only for super users, is styling. And this allows you to change the styling of the knowledge base itself. So if I just go back up to the top of the screen, we're looking for articles for user training. There we go. Can you see the acorns there? You see the lovely blue color? OK, so you've got blue and acorn. Mm -hmm. So is that styling? Yes, that is styling, yes. And so if we go back to uh, the settings here, styling, um, down here, you can choose a theme. What should we choose? Um, United. Let's choose United, click Save. Now, when I go to the knowledge base itself, wow, it's all changed. It's all turned reddish. OK, and that's a different font and different link mm. colors. OK, and could I have changed that picture of the acorns? Yes, you can. Yep. So here we are. There is the acorn picture. Um, so if you use this one here, then you'll be able to upload a different image. Um, you can customize this how you want. Thank you. OK, okay. understood. Now, this bit down here is quite important, public and private. So at the moment, it's on private, uh, meaning that uh, it can be searched in your inquiries app and merged into responses, but it's not available to members of the public. Whereas if you made it public, it can be searched by members of the public with no student CRM login. So you would choose public if you had a whole load of uh, FAQs that you wanted students to be able to search through and read, but you use private if they are internal training um, materials or if they are for your inquiries app, for example, if they are saved um, answers to inquiries. So if a 
if a student wants to look at a public uh, knowledge base, they obviously can't get inside the student serum and get to that. Um, presumably the university shares a public link that's right, yeah. So the university would share a public link with that student, or they could even put um, a link on their website saying, uh, here's a list of FAQs, and then they could, the student could click on that link and then um, search through the FAQs for the topic that they're looking for. What happens when you click on the public button there? Public Further public. down? Yeah. There you go. There's your link for the public URL. Okay, excellent. I just share that with or put that on my website somewhere. That's right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, let's change that back to private. Uh, this little thing here menu, uh, this determines whether um, this knowledge base appears in this drop down list here at the top of the CRM. So if I was to show to change it to hide and save, then it would no longer appear here. But uh, I won't do that because we do need to let uh, other users see these articles. And finally, this one's quite important too, because this determines which knowledge base is shared with which app. And so this knowledge base is articles for user training, and we shared it with inquiries, but we haven't shared it with the applications and contact manager apps. So that's another setting that your super user will need to look at and need to decide which apps need to have access to the articles in this particular knowledge base. Okay, so when there's, when there's articles are shared with those different apps, um, an officer can Can then go them? through, yes, that's right. So when I answered Archie Leach and he needed his campus map, um, I was, the inquiries app had access to the correct knowledge base that I could go in, find a campus map and share it with Archie. If uh, that knowledge base wasn't shared with the inquiries app, then I wouldn't have been able to find that campus map for him. So that's quite important. When you set this up, you need to think, okay, we're going to have certain occurrences uh, which will have articles in them. And we need to think, well, which app do we need to share those, art those occurrences with? Okay, understood, thank you. Okay, now the next thing I want to show you is how to create a very simple um, article. And I'm going to base it on the one that we did here for checklists, but I'm going to be creating an article for a template builder training video. So what I do, as in most apps, I'm gonna click on the plus there, and I'm going to call it template builder video. And I've already got my code ready. So I can go into the source and I can copy and paste my code. And this bit up here, this is a training video all about template builder. Click the button below or click the button to start watching. There is also a link to a slide deck. Now, when I go like that, it shows that piece of text. It also shows you the iframe. So that part has been done. Select the category, uh, it's a training video. And keywords, training video, and template builder. Uh, waiting, it's a training video, so I'm gonna give it a level five. I want it to be visible by all users. Um, I think we should review it yeah, in about six months. So let's say September the 1st, um, select an app. Well, it's all about template builder. So that's the app to choose there. And I'm gonna set it to live and save. And there it is, template builder video cre created by me today at uh, 10 past four. Now, I'm also going to add um, a PDF of the slide deck. So again, click on that, choose a file. There we are, template builder training, open. And this slide deck for template builder video. 
and I click save. Good, file uploaded. That's all well, good and done. And then save again, just for good luck. And how so, do I see that? Um, yeah. So I mean, now you've, you've clicked the edit pencil, but how, how do I see what that looks like in the actual? Okay. Um, so base? you you can click on uh, the magnifying glass here. Okay. Template builder video, and there it is, uh, with the PDF link at the bottom, or you can go up here. Articles for user training. And now, if I type in template. There it is already. It's ah, right lovely. There. Got it. Okay, that's good. And then I can read the article. Uh, there's the text that was at the top. Click the play button, start watching. There's also a link to the slide deck. And there is a link to the PDF slide deck. Excellent. Okay, thank you. That makes sense. Okay. Um, so there we are. That is Template Builder. You got any other questions, Tom? No, that's, that's good. I understand that. Thanks, Andy. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, if you've got any other questions, uh, please file them into customer support, but have fun with uh, knowledge base. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.